Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. I'm going to do a little bit of maintenance, so that tank needs a water change and a general cleanup. I've got a couple other tanks in here that you might have seen before. Um, and time to answer a question that I keep getting asked over and over again. First, let's get with the cleaning. So this is my pea puffer tank. It's been doing pretty well recently, actually. Um, you can see here the valves have started thickening out a bit. These are the, the taller plants at the back. Now I've got some new runners starting to make their way forward, so I might reposition them because I would really want this as a back, uh, a background plant for these, forming some kind of a a green background, obviously. Um, but still three pea puffers in here, a load of cherry shrimp and uh, one single individual coolie loach. Purely because I can't find any more anywhere, none of the shops around here seem to stock them. So I am on the lookout for more coolie loaches. Um, but if you have a closer look, you'll see that there's quite the build up of detritus. So I'm just going to do my normal water change, which is usually to take out a chunk. Um, as I'm siphoning up all the poop and then fill it back up again. So at this point I would normally grab the intake sponge which I've got on the filter, take that out and give it a good squeeze out and rinse out in the tank water that I've just taken out. And what that does is get rid of anything that's clogging it up but also doesn't kill any beneficial bacteria that's living in the sponge. Because if you don't know about the nitrogen cycle, go and look it up, but the sponge filters are often just called the mechanical filtration for something, but biological filtration uh, can be done just as effectively with sponges as with any other media. And what you don't want to do is rinse this out in straight tap water and then kill any beneficial bacteria that live in here. So just a quick squeeze out in the bucket of water that you take out and then pop it back on. Also at this point I like to pick off any little bits of hair algae that I can see that are still remaining from when I was having all the problems with the tank and generally give it a clean up. There we go, all done. I've changed some of the plants so there was some water sprite on this corner that was just looking a bit rubbish really. I've taken it out and put in some of the sissy flora. I think that's how you say it. Uh, and I've also chucked in some of these Amazon frog bits which have been doing really well in my other tank. Um, so I should have a look here. So that's my killifish tank um, and shrimp tank. Uh, but the frog bit's been going great guns in there. It's actually it's a really cool look that it gives it. Oh, I'll show you. Excuse the reflections, but as I'm always saying, it's right next to a window. It's very, very bright. But the root systems off these frog bit, great. And it's just, it creates, makes it look like a little world. So I really like the look of that. So all the plants in this tank are doing brilliantly. You remember that I had reviewed uh, a hang-on glass algae scrubber. It was something like $100 or something like that, which I didn't really like very much. But I'll tell you what, buy a few of these plants, algae gone. I've not scraped the glass in here for at least, well, since I've made that video actually. Um, and there's no more algae on the front than there, there was when I did it. So, brilliant little algae suckers. I might get some of these. I'll get them on the, the website soon. You'll be able to buy them if you want them. So, I've done the same in this tank. I've put them up here. Um, and we'll see how that goes. But I kind of like that. So, this tank, like I said, it's run by this Hang On Backs um, filter. This is the All Pond Solutions one. Really like this dirt cheap, it's only about 12 quid, I'll put a link there in the description for all this stuff uh, but I'm also running CO2 on it which is this ISTA system um, I'll put a link to my review of it up here somewhere but it's like a little bell system you probably can't see it very well at the back there um, I noticed Aquarium Co-op brought this out in one of his videos recently um, I've been using this for months now, I've never seen any pearling I still think it's quite good, I just think that the, if I move it around a little bit, the bell thing, which is what gets filled up with the CO2, this thing here, I just don't think it's big enough. I think it needs some more, something with more surface area in contact with the water, and then you might get to see some pearling. But, I'm getting good growth. Nice leaves on the 
I can't remember what that plant's called, but nice and green. Um, all the algae's gone from the vowels. Nice new growth on the Anubius. The old leaves still look a bit rank, but yeah, it's. I'd say it works. I like it. It's just the manual bit because you have to remember to top it up every day. Um, I think this has just run out. Yeah, it's only going up very, very slowly. But that can has lasted me well since I made that video. Which have a look up there and see what you think. Shall we feed them? Yes, let's feed them. Blood worms in here. So staple food for these guys is obviously cherry shrimp or shrimplets. But they get snails quite often. They don't actually eat the snail the snail shells. They just kill the snails and chomp them up the innards. Um, but I give them blood burdens and brine shrimp every now and again as a little treat. So over in the big puffer tank, this is my Fahaka puffer. You can see them at the back there. Um, in here we've also got a Senegal biter and a black ghost knife fish. So I'll see if we can get them to come out. Drop in some blood worms for them. As well as a few prawns. Yes, I know they are cooked prawns. It's not the end of the world, the internet. Don't worry about it. But this is one of the arguments I see on Facebook and places like that quite a lot, where people will go, you can't serve your fish cooked prawns, they have to be raw. They don't. Raw is better, yes. But that doesn't mean that cooked is bad. What are you doing over there? Come on. Dinner served. The other fish will beat you. I did actually feed him quite well yesterday, so maybe he's just not that bothered. But I've never, never known him turn down a meal, a bit like me. And here comes the black ghost. I'm pretty sure that the black ghost knife fish and the Senegalese bicher are both practically blind, or they appear to act that way at least. They just kind of bumble around until they bump into some food and go, oh yeah, nom 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 nom. Whereas this guy will actively hunt. He seems to be getting on with his tank mates though, he doesn't cause any trouble. As soon as I put in the bite, the first thing this one did was to go and take a chunk out of its tail. But I think <laughs> it was more of a test bite than anything else. Because they've, they've not done anything, there's been no aggression since then. Yeah, it's quite harmonious this tank. Can't actually see the bite, I don't know where he is. But anyway, that thing there in the back that you can see spinning round that is the subject of many a question on this channel. That's what I want to talk about. So the question that I'm getting asked all the time is a variation on the theme of what the hell is that thing? So I'll tell you what it is. It's called a spin stream uh, and I use it because I like the way that it helps aid the circulation in the aquarium. So I wanted to talk a little bit about circulation in general because I think it's really important. Not only does it give a more natural look to your aquarium, especially if you've got live plants and you can see them gently swaying rather than just pinned to the side in one way. It's really important to get your water flowing through your aquarium and your filtration system as much as possible and as completely as possible so you don't want dead spots. Uh, and you don't want um, areas that aren't getting flow at all um, because that's where all your crud will accumulate and it's usually where you can't find it and it'll give off nasty stuff. So you yeah, might have some excess food there and it's all starting to rot and decay and it's producing ammonia which is it's not helping you. So circulation is really good and circulation comes in lots of forms in its most basic form it's usually your filtration. So if you have a look at this tank for instance here we have a hang on back filter. What that's doing is it's taking water in from here, sucking it up using a pump, 
and then spilling it out again out the top once it's been through the filter and that action of spilling out is taking the water and making it circulate. Fine, absolutely fine. Another way to do it would be to take something really like this little air pump. Now this is a, a fancy little air pump purely because it's USB powered but an air pump dropped in and um, what that will do will be bubbles coming up rising through the water it's science basically <laughs> um, they create little gaps behind the bubble as it rises and that drags the water up um, it's the it's the principle behind how sponge filters work for instance so the bubbles draw water up that water has to be sucked in from somewhere to move and that's you've got some circulation going there so you'll quite often see in things like patio ponds or whatever it might be people dropping in air stones because they want more oxygenation it's not because these things are pumping oxygen into your tank it's because the bubbles breaking on the surface are helping that gas exchange to happen which means you get more oxygen in your water rather than the atmosphere but this is about circulation it's the action of the bubbles rising that's pulling the water along and making that water move so drop in a few extra air stones in areas you might think you have dead spots that'll help you out a little bit actual power heads which are essentially little pumps that go in the in fact i might even have one in its most basic form a little pump like this sucks water in through an impeller at the bottom and spits it back out again that'll get your water moving you get things like this which is actually a little micro filter all the way up to um, your kind of marine spec ones that you quite often see on reef tanks because flow is even more important than salt water um, which can have variable flows they can pulse i've got one on my discus tank and um, which goes at various speeds you can set it to be on for a minute and off for a minute or just pulse all these different options but the specifically the one that's in my puffer tank that's actually called a spin stream and what that's doing is it's not using any power whatsoever it's just the, the flow of the water as it's going through it's causing the nozzle to rotate in different directions and that gives you a bit of a randomized effect now you can get these things called vortex i think they're called um, in the marine world or random flow generators and things like that but they can be anywhere from like 30 to 60 even 100 quid I've seen them before for various versions now admittedly they don't have any moving parts so in theory they should be maintenance free um, but these things like the spin stream and what I've just purchased the Hydor rotating water deflector they're kind of down under a tenner type of thing which is a bit more affordable and a bit easier to get used to and they both work on the same principle and that water goes in and as the water's the force of the water is going through that spinning water goes in one end and as the force of the water goes through that spins your output and sends it off in a different direction so in theory that helps you eliminate some dead spots doesn't give a constant especially if you have a lot of flow, a constant flow will make big gouges in your substrate and things like that which is a bit silly and a bit ugly make your plants move around a little bit easier and everyone's a winner basically so you can have something along the lines of this where you'll stick your filter return line here and then you can split this off and then you can move these around and point them wherever you want to this is what I've had on my display tank for a while um, great it's just that it's static so unless you go in there and move it it's always going to point it's always going to point in the same direction that's where you get your things like your spin streams and that other one that i showed you earlier and um, by the way a quick point on this if you notice this one doesn't have a circular outing avoid this one because it's noisy as hell and rubbish the real spin streams and again i'll try and link all the ones down below um, have a circular output there and they come with lots more fitments and attachments this just came like this I think it's a, a cheap knockoff of a cheap knockoff possibly and <laughs> um, so definitely go for the ones with the circles but this type of thing where it swirls the flow around so you get a much bigger spread and um, so where traditionally your only option for reducing flow in an aquarium really was a spray bar which is still perfectly good and um, this kind of dissipates that flow so it's not a jet in one direction constantly it's always moving which i find more natural because you get to see a bit more movement in the tank 
So I'm testing that high door one I showed you earlier in this tank now. And it seems fine, it seems very similar to the spin stream. The spin stream I think was about six quid with maybe six quid postage again. Um, whereas this high door one was about 15, 16 quid I think it was. Um, I've been running the spin stream for over a year now and thanks to Pond Guru who was the first person to put me onto it. Um, and I've never had to do anything. I, I've not even cleaned it. It's had algae growing on it for all that time. It's perfect it's not missed the beat the cheap fake one I'm not so happy with that because it was just a bit dodgy really and um, but the high door one it does seem to be doing the trick it does restrict flow slightly N nothing that will be noticeable to many people and um, but I don't know if you can see it coming across on camera but you do get a little bit more movement in your aquarium for this kind of thing and that's to my eye more pleasing anyway I hope you found some of that useful and um, as always Give me a like, give me a dislike if you don't, and if you wouldn't mind subscribing if you're not already, that'd be great. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.